This episode is brought to you by Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, you should definitely check them out. It's a super easy tool that anyone can use to create and distribute their podcast. It has everything you need, and you can do it all from your computer or even your phone. Need your podcast cover art? There's a tool. Music and sound effects? They have you covered. Want to record on the fly? It's easy with the app. Now you may be saying to yourself, I already have a podcast. No worries. Just create your account, upload, and publish to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Looking for some walking around money? Anchor connects you with advertisers who match your brand. It's a one-stop shop for all of your podcasting needs. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And we are here with Danielle Pisa. She is a co-owner of Beach Caddy. She is located in New Jersey and she's here to talk to us about franchising and some of the struggles that she's had uh, owning her own business. That's right. You're listening to BizQuick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. BizQuick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Hello. Thank you guys for having me. All right, Danielle, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about Beach Caddy? I'd be happy to. So uh, Beach Caddy is a seasonal business at the Jersey Shore. We operate in four different towns right now, Ocean City, Sea Isle, Avalon, and Stone Harbor. Uh, we could be best described as Uber for the beach. So um, across all of our shore towns, we have... Uh, young high school and college students um, who are our beach caddies that will take our customers' beach gear from their house or shore rental down to the beach in the morning, set everything up for them, and then bring all their gear back at the end of the day. Uh, one of the other services we also offer is uh, a move-in and a move-out service. So as you know, on Saturdays is a big day for a lot of folks to move in. Um, and we help those folks unload their cars, bring everything up to the rental, um, and then do the same thing when they're moving out. That's only usually on Saturdays, uh, but that is one of the other services we offer. I'm guessing throughout the summer, people that are residents of the area, are they returning clients? And do you get people like year over year that, have, that return to you for the service? We, yeah, we definitely have, uh, we have great loyalty. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that a lot of our clients are local residents. We do have some that will, you know, that come down to their shore house if they, if they own one, they'll come down on the weekends. Uh, we have a few of those that will service. For the m most part, though, a lot of our customers are those weekly rentals. So um, we will service people, you know, six days at a time. And, and a lot of them have returned year over year. Okay. And, and how um, does your business model actually work in terms of, you know, being in four different towns? You're obviously not in four different places at the same time. Sure. Sure. Great question. Um, so we do have an ownership team. Uh, it's comprised of six individuals, um, including myself. A lot of uh, the team are teachers um, and nurses. So we have the benefit of teachers having off for the summer, right? So um, it really does make sense. It's a great supplement to the time. And in each of those towns, we employ managers. So we have a manager on site in the four towns, uh, and then we have caddies in each of those towns. So as an ownership team, we're there to support the managers. We can do it from, you know, outside of Philadelphia, or we can be on site with them. For the most part, we're not but the managers run the towns with the caddies. Where are the other owners located at? We're all outside of Philadelphia in the suburbs yeah. near okay. King of Prussia. And how do you, how do you price your services? Uh, so right now the services are tip priced as a package service. So like I said, we have those rentals or customers that rent for the week. So we have six day packages. If they have, you know, six beach chairs, a few bags and bogey boards. Um, that's pretty much one cart. So 
our caddies have carts that they load up to take down to the beach with the big rubber wheels so you can get across the sand easily. Or if they have more than that, they can book two carts. So it's usually a one cart, six day package, two cart, six day package. Talk to us about uh, franchising and, and the questions that you have around that. Sure. So, um, I mean, the biggest question right now is should we do it or should we not? Uh, you know, there is plenty of short towns uh, across the United States that uh, could benefit from having the service in those towns. We obviously couldn't do it ourselves from where we are. So uh, does it make sense to, to franchise the business? We have six years under our belt so far. You know, we've, we've streamlined operations quite a bit from when we first started. Um, so we, we think we have a really nice recipe to get the job done efficiently. Um, we still have some more ideas that we would, we would probably put out there. But, you know, franchising is a, it's a whole new beast. I have no idea what to expect. I, my first question is, why do you think, why can't you do it yourself? What's preventing you from expanding the business that way? So I guess the best question to that, Jewel, or best answer to that, Julie, is we all have our full-time jobs, mm -hmm. right? Um, so nobody has quite pulled the trigger to say, I'm going to quit my full-time job and dedicate all year round to specifically Beach Caddy. So that's a little bit of a hurdle. And I think a decision we probably have to make as a team. Uh, but, you know, the idea of handing over a playbook of exactly what you would need to do mm -hmm. and support somebody on the ground in those towns from where we sit, you know, and, and, and have that kind of franchise e franchise or setup where, you know, revenue is coming in, in that type of model, you know, it, it seemed to be more appealing at the time. And we actually do have a, a small investor as part of the company that it thought the, the franchise route would make sense for us. First of all, I've got a, a friend of mine, he, he owns a business and he franchised and the amount of work and money that goes into getting yourself just to the point of saying, Hey, I can franchise now is significant. In my opinion, that would be the first thing that I would investigate on your end is like, like you need to get a franchise lawyer uh, yep. and like you have to have all of your processes and, and everything documented and all that fun stuff. And, you know, we're talking six figures expense. Yep. That's, so it that's sounds it. like you've, you've investigated that already. That's what we've heard. Yeah, we 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 sat down with a a a team that actually does it, you know, for a living, um, and that's exactly what they told us. And you know, we've met some of the lawyers and um, have seen some of the numbers that it would take to get to that point that you're describing, um, and it's a it's it's daunting. So you know, the 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 question right now is, do we do we go down that path or? you know, do we try to rock it even more in the four towns that we're in? And I mean, you know, we haven't even talked about central Jersey beaches or any of the New York beaches. That's, that's more feasible from, from where we are from a location perspective. Have, have you considered hiring a general manager and, and having somebody that is responsible like full time for for all of the cities that you're located in and, and helping to expand it that way? Uh, we have in Julie. No, it's, we certainly could. And, yeah. and I mean, I think that's a great idea because none of you have to quit your job. You can have that person do it. But I, I think, in ter especially in terms of revenue, that require, would require a, a year-round business. So that okay. would be beaches and you know, coastal towns and, and the more... 12 month seasons, like, you know, South yeah. Florida, the West right. coast, or having beach caddy have a different service during the off season. There's that as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you could stick with the Jersey coast until you're able to start expanding to warmer climates. But during the off season, you've got, you know, some other service that you you're offering. 
as I'm sure you know, businesses get their ideas for services and they kind of evolve out of what customers tell you they need. That's actually where the move in, move out service came from. We didn't start with that. Somebody actually called up and said, can you do this? We haven't necessarily gotten what that service would be for year round though. So I'd be actually, I'd I'd be interested to, to explore that one. Well, so I'm a, um, I, I don't, I don't ski or, or snowboard or anything like that, but is there some sort of service you could offer people in mountain towns like during the winter? Um, I don't know. You know, we had had an idea of doing snow caddy where we flip our beach caddy app and do snow caddy in the winter months and have the, have the kids do snow removal when it snows. That's, you know, <laughs> that's that's about too. yeah, yeah. I like that. I mean, I think, you know, we haven't really been thinking that way. The focus has truly been on the, on the, the on the summer business, but. And, and I, I'm just asking that because like it, it, to me, it seems like the person who is willing to pay for your service in the summer, you know, for their, their week long vacation in the summer might also have like a week long vacation in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. there are things that like, I like the snow removal idea, but I, I mean, if I'm remembering correctly, it's not really consistent on snowing in New Jersey, right? No, so, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, you don't really want to do anything that is weather dependent. Um, there could also be those elements that make fall or winter fun, right? Which is, mm-hmm. you know, like these, a lot of times it's warm enough or nice enough in, in Jersey that you can do winter like fires and making like, s'mores or things like that right where people are like they're built like you've got your caddies that are like building a fire and now you need boy scouts involved but you know what i mean so it's more of a a fun thing rather than for the i mean the snow removal is a great idea but in general i think chil- kids don't really like to remove snow anymore <laughs> that's not really <laughs> something you're walking around offering to do but the other so if it's something fun that gets encourages families to do something in the winter together then, you know, yeah. maybe it's you're you've got a, they're delivering board games to families, right? Or just, you know, something like that, where it's, it encourages community of the family and it's fun. That might be, and it's different. It's totally different than anything that's out there right now. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think this whole pandemic quarantine has, has forced families to kind of, you know, rethink how they spend their time together. and. That could certainly support a uh, fire pit with the fam and, and board games. So I, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, what, you know, in terms of seasonal, seasonal businesses, that obviously presents its own, own challenges as we're talking about being able to operate year round. Um, have you guys had experiences with, with seasonal businesses? I, I mean, I have in, in the terms, like I, I worked in a, college town for for years okay um, yeah mainly in restaurants and and particularly one of them based a hundred percent off of football season like you made yeah. you made all of your money off of the eight weekends and if if the Hokies lost to JMU in week two which has happened more than <laughs> once I believe you're, you're you're like you're you're broke like for yeah. last year if people stop showing yep. so so yeah it's 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 interesting um the the trick there is obviously was always like how do we get more people in the door mm-hmm. and then the one problem that i ran into at, at one place was like how do you do that without like like you have to protect your brand and you can't like it, it it's hard to mix the two so like doing the 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 season like the like the winter stuff for example could sound great but is it going to hurt your summer brand? Yeah. You yeah. Know, is that going to hurt your, your bread and butter? Yeah. We, um, the, one of the other ideas that we did have, um, and it, it, it actually really started to kind of take shape when the pandemic started was, uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're made up of teachers, right. Um, and some that actually tutor, and, you know, one of the teachers had the idea about beach teach, where we're taking the kids uh, for an hour while they are on vacation down the shore um, and, you know, doing an activity 
for the six days that they're down there. Parents would pay a eat lot that up, pay that uh, pay quite a bit, um, you know, to have their, their kids learning throughout the summer. Uh, but this whole virtual world we're, we're moving into with students and teaching, you know, I, I have to imagine that parents are, could desire a, a supplement to that more one-on-one time. Um, and is that, is that something we can explore? But, you know, um, that's, that's, that's like a whole, like you said, Corey, protecting your brand, that that's a whole other company, you know? Yep. Yeah. And um, well, we were talking with somebody uh, earlier this week about somebody who owned a gym and how they were doing the, like, like trying to do like group fitness mm-hmm. for kids. So, you know, one hour a week, you know, five or six kids get like forced especially within the virtual world where you're stuck in front of a screen all day, like, you know, parents are paying for their kids to go do something like physical. Yep. I feel like that could yeah. kind of fold into it. And I, because it's that it, one, it gives, it gives community to kids, right? So you get, you know, five or six parents that are groups of parents that are all their friends, right. Mm-hmm. They, they, and their kids hang out, know each other. And they hire like a, I was, I'll just call it a personal trainer because it's essentially what it is, personal trainer for kids to give them gym time. And they pay, they pay them like hundred and hundred and twenty dollars total for like an hour. They split it up like 20 bucks a piece. And then this guy comes out and takes their kids and does not just like, it gets them out of the parents, you know, hair for yep. an hour. They do it like, they can do it like three or five times a week, right? So you do it every day, but also gives them activity, teaches them, you know, they do some games and they're outside doing something and they're doing something together, which kids aren't getting a lot of right now. No, I know. I know. Well, and Um, let's be honest with the, I mean, everybody's in quote unquote quarantine right now, but (laughs) everybody has their circle of friends and, you know, kids are still playing with each other. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i th- and 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 that's like you know that that would be where we could drive passion um within the team you know they those teachers are passionate about things like that so um i think if we did have a year-round idea it might take shape with with something like that yep and even if you had multiple so let's say you have multiple businesses right so let's just say that you're you know the the parent company is Danielle Pizza, Pizza, Pizza. And then um, you've got, you know, two or three businesses that fall underneath that. You could still go with the model of having a GM that's managing all of those because now you've got consistent revenue streams and you've also got somebody who can help take that off of your plate. You can focus on, you know, that just almost the the role that everyone is playing now and maybe even step back a little bit because you've got somebody who's handling it and you can continue to work on the concepts of how to how to build it even more mm-hmm. yeah it, and i think that danielle something that you just said that that made a lot of sense and, and that i think everybody needs to just kind of keep in mind is the the passion like just opening a business just because you need revenue like you're it, there's a good chance that's going to fail. But if you actually right. care about what you're doing, if you, if, if this is something where, you know, if you're educators or, you know, caregivers, whatever it is, you're like, Oh, this is something that I actually care about. That's going to be much more likely to succeed. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's what's gotten us through six years of not paying ourselves basically anything, you know, um, so, uh, the fact that we are a first job for a lot of these kids down the shore for the summer, um, and they essentially, we, uh, one of the things we didn't talk about, we don't have any brick and mortar, um, in any of the towns, all of our caddies basically work from their home. All you need is a smartphone to, to run the jobs. So, you know, it's, it's like their own little business. They build relationships with these customers and these customers want the same caddy day over day. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's a great experience for them. And that's really, um, that's what makes us feel good about what we're doing. It's a great experience for the employees and it's taking a lot of hassle out of the, the customer's day. Um, how many, how many um, employees do you have? Uh, we have about 15 to 20. 
We wanted to take a quick break to tell you more about SB Pace, the small business consulting company that makes this podcast possible. SB Pace, which stands for Small Business Planning, Advising, Coaching, Expertise, focuses solely on helping small businesses and entrepreneurs. Are you looking to start a small business of your own? SB Pace can get you up and running with a solid foundation that's built to last. Are you an existing small business in a slump or just looking for ways to improve what you do? We can help with that. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? SB Pace is the partner you need. You can find out more about SB Pace and what we have to offer by visiting our website, sbpace.com. So these caddies, they just set up the, the set up their spot in the morning and break it down in the evening. You got it. What if they wanted like lunch in the middle of the day? Could they be a gopher basically? We talked about that. (laughs) Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, they could. How do you advertise? So we do basically Facebook and Google advertising and Instagram too. Uh, We will also, um, we're part of all the chambers of commerce in each of the towns. So we'll have, you know, rack cards at the welcome centers. Um, They'll do social media posts for us on the chamber of commerce, social sites. Sometimes we're part of their newsletters. Uh, we have taken out a few ads in the local papers in each of the towns. Uh, but for the most part, Julie, it's Facebook. Have you thought about partnering with like any of the rental companies? Oh, yeah. Great point, Corey. Um, we have uh, what, the one year, I think it was maybe year four, we um, had our rack cards in like the rental pamphlets that you'd get at the, you know, when you pick up your keys and you get the bag from the rental company we've built good relationships with realtors in all the towns and, and we actually just had something pop this week uh, with a a boutique hotel in Stone Harbor where Corey, to your point with the lunch runs, um, their busy time is taking their hotel guests from the hotel down to the beach between the hours of like 10 AM and three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's our downtime because we try to get everybody out early and bring them back you know, after three o'clock, that's actually how our customers are creatures of habit. And a lot of them get out there early and come back in the afternoon. Um, So we just partnered with them for the last two weeks of summer where our caddies are going um, and helping them. Um, What that looks like in subsequent seasons yet, we haven't quite figured it out yet, but um, we, we are using it right now as kind of, you know, uh, a way to continue to legitimize us in these towns and uh, use it for marketing and kind of advertising efforts. Um, I have a question regarding the, the partnership. So you've got six owners total. Mm-hmm. Where is, is everybody in alignment in wanting to franchise or do you have like different owners wanting to do different things? What's, what's happening there with the group? Um, I think we're all, um, we all know that it's, you know what, Julie, it's, it's hard to say. I think that we've all given time to research it and understand it a little bit more. Um, the, the one thing that's probably holding everybody back is what Corey mentioned is, is that investment, um, to actually do it. So, <laughs> it's hard to say if everybody wants to go that way. Cause I certainly know that, that coming out of pocket for that amount of money is going to be a big challenge. So as we're, as we're talking through this, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, well, so, I mean, th- there's, a, there's another route that you could go potentially and, and uh, without talking about your own personal finances or anything, but you could have, Either way, you're going to have to set up a different company to be the franchising company. The other five people or, or four or whoever doesn't want to do it, they don't have to be a part of that franchising company. Okay. So it's possible. I mean, like that, that there, I'm sure there's a lot of legal work and, you know, whatever, but like it's, it's possible for you to take that business and franchise it without the other people. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's this, this decision we have to make. I just, I, I feel like in, in a lot of ways, you mentioned advertising and um, I, we haven't gone gung-ho on advertising. I mean, I don't know what 
I, I, I don't know what a solid advertising budget should actually look like for a business of our size. You know, as an example, last year we spent $2,500 on, on, on social media advertising. Is that enough to get, you know, to get the draw we need? <laughs> I mean, do you, do you know what your return was? Um, so we just, um, we got a little bit better at that, Corey. <laughs> it's a great question because you need to know that. Um, we, uh, we are doing all the work ourselves with, you know, placing the Facebook pixels so that we can know if they came from Facebook, well, how much do we get in terms of purchases? I'd have to look at the numbers to see, cause this was probably the first year that we have true information on that. This was also the first year we didn't do a lot of advertising because we didn't know what to expect this year down the summer. We had a, we had a marketing expert on a couple of weeks ago and with respect to advertising, like on social media, um, her recommendation was that you spend a thousand dollars a month. And that could be like, you know, you could go 500 on Instagram and 500 on Facebook or whatever, but that you really needed to make that big of an investment and go big and to, to see the return that you were looking for. Otherwise it was just essentially, it was wasted money. It was an yeah. interesting concept. Cause I was okay. like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> Cause that seems yeah. like a lot, but, and, and she wasn't suggesting that you do that every month, but if you're going to run a campaign, run it, spend a lot of money on it, get that return, pause it, then run another campaign and just sort of cycle through it. Right. Right. So. right. Well, I mean, you know, for, for work, we were kind of in the ballpark close to it last year then for based on what we spent in that, um, you know, is, is, is social media where we should be putting our, our advertising dollars? I mean, I feel, I feel like it, it is, especially with, um, you know, word of mouth has been insane for our business. I it just, you know, people just talking about Beach Caddy is um, really brought us a, a lot of great, great new customers. So that aspect of it is great. Am I missing something though with, with advertising outside of Facebook and Instagram and, you know, Google ads and things like that? I mean, we, we did just do some, we took some nice strides with email marketing um, this year and card abandonment and things like that. But do y'all have an app? Yeah, we do. Do you do any kind of like, since you said word of mouth is used, do you do any kind of referral perks? Not necessarily. No, no. Um, we'll kind of, you know, run some cute Facebook things from time to time that says, you know, tag a friend, uh, the, those types of things. Um, we have the ability to do referral codes. So, so we could, are you thinking run a, run an email campaign for all existing customers, you know, well, refer so a friend type of thing. Right. Yep. Yeah. Do you have a, 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 a marketing strategy that you've pulled together? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go with no. How do you define marketing strategy, Julie? Um, do I have anything in writing documented process-wise? No. Um, I, our marketing strategy has just been, I mean, can best be categorized as social media. Yeah. I. Yeah. You have a good business, right? And it's a, it's a good model. Um, regardless, I mean, you could keep it exactly as it is and it's just this summertime business that brings in extra cash for all of the owners and it's, it's nice. Um, you could, if you focused on the marketing of it, you could expand it and grow it and probably pretty quick, which would get you to the point where you could either move down that franchising road or find a way to make it year round. So it's more income, hire a GM, get all of your, you know, processes documented and then, you know, grow it that way and then make a decision, you know, in like two or three years with what you want to do with it. But it really wouldn't take a lot to grow it significantly where franchising it becomes a very real option because right. the money's there. Yeah. 
Yeah. We are running out of time. <laughs> so, so wanted to thank you, Danielle, for the time today and, and talking about your business. Danielle, tell our listeners how they can find Beach Caddy. Absolutely. So you can find us on uh, Facebook. Um, our page is, is, is called Beach Caddy. I think it's facebook.com slash Beach Caddy. Um, and on Instagram at NJ Beach Caddy. Uh, so those are the ways you can find us. Our website is called beachcaddy.app. Um, and that's where you can see all of our services across all the short towns. Perfect. And we will put all that information in the show notes so that our listeners can easily find it. And if you want to learn more about our business, you can reach us at, uh, through sbpace.com or bizquickpodcast.com. We're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. So you can connect with us there as well. Yep. And make sure that you subscribe to the podcast wherever it is that you listen. Um, and please like and review us, but only if you're going to give us five stars. But we also like feedback, even negative feedback, Julie. So feel free to reach out with anything that you liked, you didn't like, uh, topics you want to hear us talk about, whatever it is. We, we love the feedback. And most importantly, we've got a book out. Go, go to our website, go to Amazon. It's called Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. Buy the book, read the book, fill out the workbook, call us with questions. Yes. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And this is BizQuick, helping small businesses across America.